readers love to be surprised by a good twist and as writers we have to trick them readers expect red herrings in suspense thriller mystery that's half the fun even if we don't know the term red herring we expect it from these genres but as writers we need to know what it is and how we can use it in our own writing and do watch this video till the end because i share examples from novels Hollywood movies and Indian movies. What is a red herring? The term red herring came from an old method of fox hunting where dogs were trained to follow the fox's scent even if there were other scents that are distracting. And how they trained the dogs was by letting the fox go and then trailing some red herring, a kind of a fish, across the path and then releasing the dogs. Some dogs would get distracted after hitting the red herring smell and follow that instead of the fox's scent. The trainer basically had to train the dogs to stay on the fox's trail and not follow the other scent, the scent of a red herring. This metaphor is used in many ways like in debates and in our case in writing a novel with a mystery, thriller, suspense element. A very obvious example of this is on our television news channels where politicians are asked a certain thing and instead of addressing the question at hand, they start talking about an absolutely unrelated topic. I bet you can think of many instances like this, so I won't waste your time giving you those examples. But I will share some movies and books that might help better explain how it is used in novels and movies. It's a way to distract the characters and the readers and send them in a different direction, distract them from the real thing, the real villain, distract them in their investigation which makes it more interesting if done right. As a writer, our job is to give a potential solution to a mystery at hand. We have to give the distraction, the red herring, enough build up to make it plausible and believable. The point to remember is that red herring is not a logical fallacy, which means as writers, our logic shouldn't be flawed. That's not going to work because the reader can see through it. It is the reader's thinking that needs to be flawed without making them feel cheated. As writers, we have to lay down facts and clues that lead the reader down the wrong path, but they have to be facts. For the past few months, I've been diligently looking at movies and reading books with red herrings and trying to see why it works and how I can use this literary device in my own story. If you're new here, I'm working on a romantic suspense novel called The Rajput and as I'm working on the rewrites, I'm working to sharpen the story elements. All right, let's look at some movies and some of these were based on books, but I'm using movie as an example because there are higher chances you've seen the movie than read the book. After you've watched this video, you can easily go back and watch these movies to understand this technique and it's faster with movies. Major spoiler alert, you've been warned. The Da Vinci Code and in that it's Bishop Ringarosa. We are led to believe that he is the one controlling everything but then we find out that he himself is being manipulated. The other one is Harry Potter and Prisoner of Azkaban. The whole book revolves around the fact that Sirius Black is the one who betrayed Harry's parents and is Lord Voldemort's supporter only to find out that it was Peter Pettigrew. Another Harry Potter example is from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. We know someone has put Harry's name in Goblet of Fire, but we don't know who. Maybe it's Snape or it's Karkaroff. And when it is revealed, it's Professor Moody, which is so shocking. But actually, it's Barty Crouch Jr. And you kind of then start connecting the dots. And not to forget the whole arc of Professor Snape in all the seven books. Moving on from Hollywood movies to Indian movies. And I'm going to use Hindi movies as an example because that's what I watch. In the movie Kahani, we are led to believe that Vidya Balan's character is in Calcutta in search of a missing husband. Only at the end, it's revealed that she is actually the widow of an IB officer who was using the police and the IB for her own motives. In Badla, Amitabh Bachchan's character, the lawyer, agrees to help Nana, played by Tapsi Pannu, and 
in the whole movie they are going back and forth tapsi is not trusting him and there are so many twists and turns and dead ends and finally she trusts him and tells him the truth and she realizes she's confessed to an impostor if you want to incorporate this in your own writing i'd recommend doing what i'm doing right now you know analyzing your favorite books and movies and seeing why these red herrings work so well in them and tell me which red herring in books or movies are your favorite tell me in the comments below and i'll see you in the next one